Alright, get your Bibles with you, please. At uh, tayo po ay nasa Joshua chapter 22 na. And Joshua chapter 22 is about the unity of God's people. The unity of God's people. Abasahin ko po verse 27 down through verse 29. But that it may be a witness between us and you. Joshua chapter 22 verse 27. But that it may be a witness between us and you and our generation after us that we might do the service of the Lord before Him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings that your children may not say to our children in time to come you have no part in the Lord therefore said we that it shall be when they should so say to us or to our generations in time to come that we may say again behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made not for burnt offerings not for sacrifices but it is a witness between me or between us and you verse 29 but God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord to burn an altar for burnt offerings for meat offerings or for sacrifices beside the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tabernacle. Dito po sa Joshua 22, makikita po natin ang bayan ng Israel na sila po ay talagang established na sa west of the Jordan River and they enjoyed rest from war. Joshua chapter 1 hangga sa Joshua chapter 21 ay talagang puro pakikipaglaban at dito po ay nagpapahinga na po sila. So the time came for the Israelites to settle down more permanently. At yung tribe po ni Reuben, ni Gad, at ang kalahate ng tribe ni Manase ay kailangan ng bumalik do sa kanilang teritoryo east of the Jordan. So sa passage po na ating binasa, makikita po natin sa kanilang pagbabalik doon sa east of Jordan, Nagkaroon po ng misunderstanding between them and the rest of the tribes of Israel shortly after they got back to their lands. So, ano ba ang makikita nating central issue dito sa Joshua chapter 22? Unang-una po ipinapakita sa atin dito, the unity among God's people. Under the true worship of God, it is important that God's people have unity. Kung tayo po yung mga sinasabi natin, tayo yung mga totoong sumasamba sa tunay at buhay na Diyos, ay dapat po meron tayong pagkakaisa. Kagaya po dito sa panahon ng children of Israel, the ancient Israel, when they were finished in conquering the land, Eh, kung kailan po natapos na yung kanilang pakikipag-away sa mga kalaban nila, tila baga nagbabanta naman ay sila ang mag-away-away. So, pangit po sa mga tao ng Diyos, pangit po sa mga lingkod ng Diyos ang nag-aaway-away. Pangit po sa church ang nag-aaway-away ang mga miyembro. Hindi po kailanman ini-encourage sa Bible ang divisiveness o ang uh, spirit of division sa church. Kaya nga po ang sabi ni Apostle Paul sa church sa Corinth that there should be no schism in the body but that there should be of one mind and of one spirit. Ever since mga minamahal kahit dito pa lang sa bayan ng Israel Pinapakita na po sa atin ang kahalagahan ng unity among God's people. So, there must be unity unang-una in times of war. Naalala nyo, nung si Ruben at si Gab 
at yung half-tribe ni Manase ay nag-decide na hindi na sila titira sa promised land kundi contento na sila doon sa east side of the Jordan River there was a concern that they might abandon the other tribes and not assist them in taking Kenyan in fact Nagalit sa kanila si Moses at ang sabi ni Moses sa kanila, Shall your brethren go to war while you are resting here? Pero later on, pinayagan na rin sila ni Moses, pagkatapos nilang mangako, to act as one people with the rest of Israel and help them in their conquest. So nung sinabi ni Moses sa kanila, kasi ayaw na nilang pumasok ng promise lang eh. Nakatawid na sila ng ano eh, dyang, ay, ayaw na nila pumasok promise na, nandun lang sila sa east side of Jordan. Sabi nila, contento na kami rito. Gusto na namin itong lugar na to dito na lang kami. At sabi ni Moses, ang inyong mga kapatid makikipaglaban, tapos kayo na mamahinga dito. Galit si Moses talaga. Pero nung nangako sila na itutuloy nila at kasama silang makikipaglaban ng children of Israel, pumayag na rin si Moses na sige, you may stay here. So, dito'y pinapakita unang-una mga minamahal. Dapat po, as children of God, sama ta- sama-sama tayo sa laban. Hindi pwedeng yung iba nating mga kapatid ay diretso sa pakikipaglaban para sa gawain ng Diyos. Tapos tayo naman eh, pasiting sitting pretty lang at uh, kukuyakuyakoy lang tayo sa ating mga upuan habang yung iba ay nagpapagal, gumagawa naglilingkod at talagang nagpapawis nagsasakripisyo sapagkat gusto nilang ipakipaglaban ang gawain ng Diyos at alam naman natin kung sino ang kaaway ng gawain ng Diyos diba si Satan while others are really fighting a good fight and they're waging war in their spiritual battle against Satan. Marami mga Kristiyano, they're just taking easy, living in their comfort zone, doing nothing for the Lord. Wala man lang silang ginagawa, hindi na nahiya. Hindi nakikipag-isa sa iglesia, sa gawain, at sa pakipaglaban para sa gawain. Mga minamahal, Wag po tayong makontento dahil madali ang buhay natin at maganda ang takbo ng buhay natin. At wala tayong ginagawa para tumulong sa pagtataguyod at pagsisikap na ang gawain ng Diyos maisulong. There must be unity among the brethren in times of war. Kaya ang sabi ni Moses sa kanila, Shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? While you rest here? Kaya hindi ko maintindihan yung mga kristyano, naturi nga mga kristyano, pero sa mga panahon na ang iglesia ay nakikipaglaban sa kaaway at kinakailangan ay nandoon sa gawain ng Diyos, eh sila naman eh paisi-isi lang at walang ginagawa para sa gawain. There must be unity in times of war and there must be unity in times of worship. Having secured a foothold and conquered the promised land with the help of these two and a half tribes, Joshua sent them back home. Tapos na yung pakikipaglaban nila, di ba? Tinupad nung children of God, children of Reuben, and half tribe of Manasseh, tinupad nila, sumama sila makipaglaban, at nagtagtumpay sila. So, bilang gantimpala sa kanila ni Joshua, sabi sa kanila ni Joshua, o sige, Pwede na kayong umuwi sa inyong pamilya. You may go back in the eastern part of Jordan and go home with your family. So, na-encourage sila at sila ay umuwi habang si Joshua ay ine-encourage sila na sa kanilang paglisan, sana ay huwag nilang makalimutan ang pananambahan sa Diyos. It was essential that they continue not only to support their brother tribes, but also to do so in the service and worship of the God of Israel. Hindi po sapat na sila ay nagpatuloy lamang at nakiisa lamang sa pakikipaglaban para sa pagsakop nila sa promised land. 
dapat sila ay magpatuloy din kasama ng children of Israel sa pagsamba. So, oh, bagamat pinapayagan sila ni Joshua na umuwi sa kanilang lugar, pinapaalala sa kanila ni Joshua na sa panahon at araw ng pagsamba, dapat sila ay kasama pa rin ng children of Israel. So, what causes trouble in unity? Once the two and a half tribes got home, trouble arose because they built an altar in their place. Pagkatapos silang paalalahanan ni Joshua na, sige, pwede na kayong umuwi, pero pagka-araw at oras ng pananambahan, ay makakasama namin kayo rito. Eh, itong children of Reuben, God, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, nagtayo sila ng sarili nilang altar doon sa kanilang lugar. So, trouble arose when they built an imposing altar. Shiloh had been established as the one site where sacrifices could be lawfully offered. And the tribes west of the Jordan gathered there to make war on the east tribes of the Jordan. Dahil sa ginawa nila na nagtayo sila ng sarili nila ng altar, aside do sa altar na meron na already sa Shiloh, lumusog yung tribe ng Israel, yung nine tribes, lumusog sila. Or yung seven and a half tribes, lumusog sila. At gusto nilang awayin itong uh, tribe of Reuben, tribe of God, at yung... Uh, Half tribe of Manasse. So they gathered there to make war on the tribes of East of Jordan. We have to understand that they did this because they were accusing their brethren about false worship. Muntik na nagkagulo, muntik na nagpatayan sila, kapatid sa kapatid, Israel sa Israel. Because of one accusation, false worship. Nakarating sa tenga nitong uh, nine and a half tribes. Tama po, nine and a half tribes. Mali yung sinabi ko kanina, seven. Nine and a half tribes. Nakarating sa kanilang tenga na, Uy, nagtayo ng altar yung two and a half tribes dun sa east of Jordan. Hindi pwede yan kasi ang altar nila nandun lang sa Shiloh. Dapat kung paano sama-sama sila sa war, sama-sama rin sila sa worship. Kung paano may unity sila during war, dapat may unity rin sila during worship. Ay nagtayo ng sariling altar itong uh, tribe ni God at ni Manase at half tribe ni Manase at ni Reuben. So, they thought na gumagawa na ng sariling pagsamba itong mga ito. At hindi sila natuwa sa kanilang nabalitaan. They accuse them of false worship. So in a message to the eastern tribes, they reminded the people in the east of the problems that arose when the worship of God was corrupted by Israel's disobedience in the past. So kaya nagalit yung nine and a half tribes kasi naalala nila kung paanong nagka, nagkagulo-gulo ang buhay nila sa mga nakaraang kasaysayan dahil sa ang pagsamba sa Diyos ay kinurap ng ilang mga bayan sa Israel. This was a commendable zeal. Sapagkat ayaw nilang maulit ang ganitong problema. Maganda naman po ang at tama naman po ang ipinaglalaban ng nine and a half tribes. God had said sacrifices could be offered only at one location. At yun nga po ay sa Shiloh. And building another altar for the nine and a half tribes, sa para sa kanila, the two and a half tribes was asking for trouble. So what causes trouble? Kapag ka meron pong misunderstanding. What causes trouble sa church? kapag ka meron pong false accusation. What causes trouble sa church? Kapag ka ang pinairal ko po kagad, imbis na pag-usapan at magkaintindihan, ay init ng ulo. When the other tribes heard about 
the children of God and the children of Manasseh and the children of Reuben building their own altar they mastered an army to go to war against the tribe of Manasseh so problema po yan eh at nashock ang tribe of Manasseh because they have nothing but good intentions hindi naman sila nagtayo ng altar to worship false gods hindi po sila nagtayo ng altar to separate from worshiping God Sabi nila, God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord. No, this altar is not for offering sacrifices, but to serve as a memorial, as a witness that we are brothers in Christ, that we are God's people, brother. So kaya sila nagtayo ng altar na yon. hindi para para hihiwalay sila ng pagsamba, kung hindi para maging bantayog lang yon ng pagkakaisa na pa- ipaalala hindi lamang sa kanila kundi sa mga susunod na henerasyon na itong two and a half tribes sa east of Jordan ay kabahagi pa rin ng children of Israel so gaya po sa Israelites tayo rin, we need to be accountable to each other we should always consider carefully before accusing our brothers and sisters in Christ Huwag nating pa- pairalin ng init ng ulo. Huwag nating pairalin yung tayo ay mag-aaway-aaway kagad sa isang iglesia dahil meron lang hindi pagkakaunawaan. So, nung naintindihan nila na ito palang itinayong altar ay hindi para mag sa Panginoon at para sumamba sa ibang Diyos-Diyosan, doon lang sila nahimasmasan. E eh, akala namin kasi humihiwalay kayo ng pagsamba. Akala kasi namin magtatayo kayo ng sarili nyong simbahan dyan eh. Pero hindi ho pala. It was a memorial set up as a witness so that the children of Israel, especially the nine and a half tribes, would be reminded that the two and a half tribes on the other side of Jordan ay part pa rin ng Israel. So, what was the truth about unity? Nakita natin what was the trouble when there were, were, there were misunderstandings and false accusations na kakagulo po sa church. So, ano ba ang truth? As the tribes of Reuben, God, and half tribe of Manasseh were heading home from the conquest of Canaan, they thought, we'll be separated from our brethren, and so let us build this altar so that we may remember and our children's children may remember that we belong to the children of Israel. So, for that reason, the tribe of Manasseh decided to erect an altar by the Jordan to show that they were one people. So the eastern tribes did not build the altar for another religion. It was built as a reminder to the people of the west of Jordan, the nine and a half tribes, that they are one, that they had share in Israel, and they are one among God's people. So, the eastern tribes were just as concerned about true worship as the western tribes were. And they wanted to show their unity with Israel under one true worship of the Lord God. We should imitate this concern. Let us prize unity with other professing Christians, but never at the expense of the truth. True unity can only come as believers together worship God according to His truth. Importante po na hindi po natin ibebenta ang katotohanan. Importante po na hindi natin compromise ang katotohanan. Truth will always be truth. And we should never substitute truth with falsehood. True unity can only come as believers come to worship God according to His truth. Now, nakita po natin, the first concern was unity. Now, the second concern is purity. Purity. Like the tribes described in today's passage, we should be concerned for the pure worship of God. Kasi pag hindi po tayo sumamba sa Diyos ng buong kadalisayan, Wala hong silbi ang ating pagsamba. 
naalala nyo na si Jesus Christ ay nakipag discussion do sa Samaritan woman eh meron silang hindi pagkakaunawaan tungkol sa pagsamba and so Jesus Christ clarify the matter at ang sabi niya what is important in worship is not the place where we worship but the person that we worship and God is a spirit and they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship Him that is the kind of worship that we should have in our churches spiritual worship worship based on the purity of God's word we cannot take away God's word and have pure worship ang ating pong pananambahan sa Diyos ay nakokorap kapag ka inalis po natin ang kadalisayan ng salita ng Diyos sa ating pananambahan If we violate God's word in worship corruption of doctrine will soon follow The Rubenites, the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh had been given the land on the east side of Jordan by Moses but they had been told by God to cross the Jordan and help the other tribes take their land They were obedient and helpful for seven years as they fought alongside the tribes west of the Jordan to conquer their enemies. Now that the land was conquered and fully parceled sa bawat isang tribes, they could go back to their families and lands. Joshua chose his words carefully. He wanted to make it clear that these people who wanted to live in the Transjordan were returning to their second best. They were going to a possession that God had conceded to them only because they asked of Him. Joshua was genuinely concerned for their spiritual walk after they, re they returned to the wrong side of the river. Kaya naman po pala ganun ang pag-aalala ng nine tribes eh. Kasi talagang ito pong two and a half tribes were facing danger of becoming compromisers of being deviated from the truth. Kasi nasa labas sila ng promise lang eh. It's not God's best for them. It's a wrong choice that they made but God has allowed. Pero mga minamahal, mag-iingat tayo. Kasi hindi porket pinayagan ng Diyos ay perpektong kalooban ng Diyos. Minsan, hinahayaan tayo ng Diyos sa ating mga kagustuhan, pero hindi ibig sabihin nun ay pababayaan na natin na sa lahat ng ating gagawin, eh, yung gusto na lang natin ang ating paiiralin. Kapag hindi po tayo nag-ingat, malaki ang tsansa na tayo po ay mapalayo at maligaw sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. And this was the concern of Joshua. And this was the concern of the nine and a half tribes of Israel doon sa two and a half tribes. Kaya nung nagtayo sila ng altar doon sa kanilang lugar, akala nila tuloy, aba, ay siyasamba na yata itong mga ito sa ibang Diyos. And that, that was the reason of uh, disunity. That was the reason that they almost fight against each other. Mabuti na lang nagkapaliwanagan sila. So it seems that the order of the commands God gave them and us is significant. First, we should give God our love. Para po mapangalagaan natin yung purity sa ating pagsamba, we should give God first and foremost our love and devotion. Sabi po ni Joshua sa kanila, to love the Lord your God is the utmost responsibility na dapat nilang pangalagaan. To love the Lord your God. Tatandaan po natin yan palagi. Para sa ating pagsamba sa Diyos, hindi po tayo maligaw. Tayo po'y sumasamba to express our love and devotion to God. 
not to be entertained. Kaya ngayon nagkakagulo-gulo sa mga ibang mga simbahan at uh, sila po ay nalalayo na sa tamang doktrina kasi they come to the house of God and all they wanted is to be entertained. Oho, yung nagbibip po sa loob ay yung aming uh, uh, ang tawag dito, power charger po yun na uh, in case mag-brown out na kuryente kami. <laughs> Nabunot po kasi. So, huwag nyo lang pong pansinin yun. <laughs> Si Manong Johnny talaga. Masyadong matalas ang pandinig eh. <laughs> so, ako po ang pakinggan nyo. Uh, concentrate on the Word of God. Uh, pagka tayo po, mga minamahal, hindi natin iningatan yung pag-ibig natin sa Diyos at tayo ay nalamig sa pagmamahal natin sa Diyos. Mas madali po na ang pagsamba natin ay maligaw sa katotohanan. Like what I'm saying to most of the people now trying to seek the face of God and worship Him. And yet, all they wanted is to be entertained. To be, ano, yung, yung flesh nila ma-feed. Instead na yung spirit nila ay mag-hunger and thirst for God. Alam nyo mga minamal, ibang-iba ang spiritual worship sa fleshly worship. Sa fleshly worship, people dance, people move around, people are trying to get excited and be happy and trying to be entertained by what is going on upstage. But that is not true worship. Bakit kailangan patayin ang ilaw? Bakit kailangan magkaroon ng strobe lights? Bakit kailangan magkaroon ng live music? para ang tao ay sumamba sa Diyos. Eh, hindi naman ito ang nire-require sa salita ng Diyos. Sa salita ng Diyos, ang sabi, Be still and know that I am God. Sa salita ng Diyos, ang sabi, Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Kailangan po, we stand in awe of the holiness of God. Kapag ka ikaw ay in awe, hindi yan yung nagsisigaw, hindi yan yung nagsasasayaw, hindi yan yung nagdadadamba. Sa kayo nakakita ng be still na nagdadadamba, sa kayo nakakita na stand in awe na nagsisigaw. Lahat sa Bible, sa Old Testament, kapag sila ay nasa presence ng Diyos, sila po'y natatahimik, sila po'y napapayuko, sila po'y napapaluhod, sila po'y, sila po'y nandoon talaga ang malalim na pagsamba sa Diyos. Why? Because true worship must be filled with love and devotion. Love that comes not out of feelings, but out of the truth of knowing who God is. Second, we are to walk in His ways and to obey His commands. Sa pagsamba po sa Diyos para maging pure, kailangan po lumakad tayo ayon sa Kanyang kaparaanan at mga kautusan. This is why in our worship, iniingatan po natin na hindi tayo magkaroon ng chaos, hindi tayo magkaroon ng confusion, hindi tayo magkaroon ng tinatawag na uh, control uh, situation, controlled situation. Anong po yung tinatawag na Uh, chaos, kaguluhan. Ano yung tinatawag na confusion? Kalituhan. Ano yung tinatawag na control situation? Yung, there was manipulation going on. Eh, kitang-kita mo naman eh, nagkakaroon ng manipulation eh. Kasi hinahype yung feelings ng tao eh, for about an hour eh, with repetitious songs. Oh. With the beat of the drums. And with the song leader trying to Uh, hit up and hype up the emotion of the people. That's controlled situation. People are not really free in their minds and in their hearts to worship God. Pagka pumasok ka sa ganong paraan ng pananambahan, talagang para kang na-hypnotize. Talagang para kang na-control na sa iyong puso't isipan. Pero kung ikaw ay tunay na nakakakilala sa salita ng Diyos at alam mo ang tinuturo sa Bible, 
you will easily discern that what's going on in such kind of worship is not the flow of the Spirit of God. Kasi kung ang Diyos ay Espiritu at ang Espiritu ng Diyos ang kumikilo sa puso ng tao, ang sabi po ng Bible, people will worship God in spirit and in truth. Kaya po, mga minamahal, last, we are to serve Him with all our heart and soul. We are to hold on to Him personally through our relationship with Him. Mga minamahal, ang importante sa ating pagsamba sa Diyos is our personal relationship with God. Yes, we go to the house of God to encourage one another, to provoke one another, to love and to good works. But first and foremost, we come to the house of God to go to the one we love and worship, to whom we have a personal relationship. God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Spirit of God moving in our hearts, urging us, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. To mix up this order of spiritual priorities is to fall off the road of life on one side or the other. There are two sides of the ro road, two sides of error that would destroy the purity in our local churches. This is what Satan awaits for the uncareful pilgrim in following the Lord. Ano po ang mga sumisira sa unity sa church? Ano po ang sumisira sa purity ng church? Number one is heresy. Heresy creeps into the heart of the one who, who errors by loving without critical listening. Ulitin ko ah, heresy creeps into the heart of the one who errors by loving without criti critical listening. This traveler hears and accepts without checking the message against God's word. The other side of the ro road is another error which is legalism. So yung unang error is heresy. At yung heresy po ay dumarating kapag ka, sa halip na makinig tayong mabuti sa salita ng Diyos, ang pinakikinggan natin yung sinasabi ng ibang tao. That's why the Berean churches or the Berean people in the time of the Apostle Paul, they were called more noble than the rest of the disciples. Kasi, every time Paul preached, si Paul na yan ha, si Paul na yung nangangaral. Hindi nila ito tinatanggap face value. But rather, they look at the scriptures whether these things are so. At sana hanggang ngayon, nananatili ito sa ating mga simbahan. Magdala kayo ng Bible. Huwag kayong basta makinig sa pastor. Huwag kayong basta maniwala sa lahat ng sinasabi ng pastor. We believe in a pastor-led church. Ah, nagtuturo ako ng pastor-led church. Nagtuturo ako ng loyalty sa pastor. Nagtuturo ako na dapat tayo ay sumunod sa pastor. Pero teka lang. Before you give your loyalty to your pastor and before you follow your pastor, make sure that what he's preaching and teaching you is out of the word of God. That's why you always have the Bible in your hands. That's why every time he will stand behind the pulpit and before you say Amen and before you agree, you make sure that what he's teaching and preaching you is out of the Word of God. Kahit dito po sa hope goes on, you have every right to check from the Bible and in your Bible if what we are preaching and teaching here is from and what the Bible says. Pag hindi ho, stop listening. Pag hindi ho, stop watching. Huwag niyong suportahan, huwag niyong tulungan, huwag niyong pakinggan yung mga taong nangangaral na akala mo ay tumatayo at nangangaral ng salita ng Diyos, pero yung pala, ang ipinapangaral ay tinuturo ay yung sa kanilang mga personal na katuruan at doktrina lamang. Kailangan po tiyak tayo Huwag tayong padala sa heresy. Ano yung heresy? Parang hearsay, di ba? Hearsay, heresy, hearsay. 
Maraming ganyan eh, yung mga turo na salit-saling sabi lang. Pero when you look at the Word of God, nasaan? Nasaan sa Bible? Saan sinabi sa Bible yan? And those men of God na talagang nakikita nyo preaching God's Word in all its purity, mga minamal, suportahan nyo yan, mahalin nyo yan, tulungan nyo yan, kung pastor nyo yan, talagang itaguyod nyo yan. Hindi po dumarating sa buhay nyo yan ng araw-araw. It's not every day, sabi nga nung isang awit, it's not every day that someone like your pastor comes your way. Huwag mo nang, huwag mo nang hayaang mawala pa sa buhay nyo yung pastor na yan. Kapag yung pastor na yan ay talagang tumitindig sa salita ng Diyos at itinataya ang buhay para sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. You have to love your pastor like that if your pastor is like that. Pero kung ang yung pastor ay nagangaral ng heresy, ah, it's about time na you walk separate ways. Hindi naman po tayo nagtuturo ng blind loyalty. Ang tinuturo po natin is loyalty based on the Word of God. Siyempre, your pastor is not perfect. But you have a perfect Bible. And nobody has the right to desecrate that. Nobody has the right to desecrate the Word of God. The Bible is our final authority. So, away with heresy and away with legalism. Ano naman po yung legalism? Ito po ang isa sa sumisira din ng unity and purity ng church. Eh, yung legalism. There are two kinds of legalism in the Bible. One is doctrinal legalism. One is practical legalism. Yung doctrinal legalism po, ito po yung kamukha nito. Yung nabasa natin dito. Akala nila, dahil nagtayo lang ng altar, akala nila, lumihis na sa salita ng Diyos. Eh, hindi nila alam, yung altar pala na yun, iba naman pala ang purpose. Hindi naman pala yun to worship another God, but to become a memorial na silang two and a half tribes, kahit na nakalayo doon sa nine and a half tribes, eh, nandun ang kanilang pakiisa sa nine and a half tribes. So, <laughs> hindi tayo dapat maging judgmental. Bawal sa church ang judgmental. Before you accuse the brethren, before you say a word against the brethren, especially against your pastor, tiyakin mo muna kung ano yung sinasabi mo. Eh, may basihan ba? sa salita ng Diyos. Hmm. Doctrinal legalism sa, sa, sa New Testament po, yan yung <laughs> i-dinadagdag nila yung gawa sa kaligtasan. Mga legalist ang tawag sa kanila. Yung nagsturo na un, un, unless you are circumcised, you cannot be saved. That's doctrinal legalism. Uh, dinadagdagan nila ng paggawa ng mabuti ang pananampalataya. At hanggang ngayon, umiiral yung ganyang pagtuturo, ha? Sana, hindi sa mga Baptist churches natin na you cannot be saved unless na ikaw ay gumawa. Hindi ho, salvation is purely of grace, not to works, lest any man should boast. Ano naman yung practical legalism? Yung practical legalism naman, ito yung mas masahol ka pa sa salita ng Diyos. O oh, hindi, uh, let me rephrase that. That is wrong. Mas mahigpit ka pa sa salita ng Diyos when it comes to practical Christian living. Hindi porket ang isang tao ay hindi mo nakikita ang kagaya mo sa pananamit, sa pananalita, eh, mali na siya at tama ka. Itong mga practical legalists, lagi na lang silang tama. They have this holier than thou attitude na pagka ang ginagawa ng isang kristyano ay hindi kagaya ng kanilang ginagawa, iniisip nila, mali yung kristyano na yon. Hindi naman po ganon ang dapat na pinapairal nating spirito sa ating simbahan. Kailangan balance. Kailangan lagi po nating tinitingnan both sides of the story. Ang ating Panginoong Yesus, hindi siya sumaside kanino man. But He's always on the side of the truth. And we should also be like that. So mga minamahal, as we close, let us keep the unity sa ating simbahan. Like the children of Israel, they kept their unity to become one nation under God. Tayo po, let us become one body under Christ 
sa ating mga churches. And to close, ito po ang sabi sa Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where which you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, and devouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the band of peace. How do we keep the unity in the band of peace sa ating mga churches? Limang bagay po, quickly. Walk worthy, walk humbly, walk meekly, walk patiently, and walk lovingly. Let us keep that kind of attitude sa ating mga simbahan. Let us walk worthy, let us walk humbly, let us walk meekly, let us walk patiently, and let us walk lovingly. That word walk means live. And to live, you have to walk, not run. What's the difference? When you walk, you are taking your time. You are not in a hurry. You are not in a rush. You're taking your time. You have to wait on God. His, per His time, His perfect time will come. And your time will come. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a hurry. And to walk according to God's will, you have to be worthy. You have to be humble. You have to be meek. You have to be patient. And you have to be loving. Pagka ganito ang spirito natin sa simbahan, mapapanatili po natin ang unity. May ingatan po natin ang purity ng ating simbahan. So I encourage you, and endeavor to keep the unity and the purity of our local churches. God bless you. This is Pastor Jess Marzigan. Keep reaching out. Keep sharing the gospel. Let others know Jesus saves. Tayo po yung Oh, 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 oh,